Hi guys, it's Lauren, Lauren Daisy. Daisy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Gossip Girl Week here on my channel. Today we are looking at your unpopular opinions from Reddit. I have done this video before with Pretty Little Liars and I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite videos that I did. So I asked you guys on Reddit for your unpopular opinions and we are just gonna go through them, talk about if I agree, if I disagree. And as always, feel free in the comments to let me know if you agree or you disagree with what we're gonna talk about today. The chemistry between the actors for Blair and Chuck is the main reason it's a popular shit. I kind of agree with this, I'm not gonna lie. I think, I mean, I mentioned this in my Blair love interest video, so you can go and watch that if you haven't seen it yet. But I said in that video, I think one of the main reasons that I love Chuck and Blair so much is because of the chemistry that Leighton and Ed had. It is off the charts. It is so, so good. And I think that really does just bring a life to these characters that they maybe wouldn't have had otherwise, or if they had been paired up differently. Like Dan and Serena, I think they have pretty good chemistry. I quite like Dan and Serena, but even then it's not on the same level as Chuck and Blair. There is something about their chemistry together that just fits so well. And it makes their scenes so insanely good and enjoyable to watch. The acting in them is just always so insane. Like Leighton is so incredibly talented. And when you can feel the emotions in a Chuck and Blair scene, the banter that they have, I don't know, they, they look good together. It's just, I don't know, there's something in the water. And it is, I think, a big factor as to why they were as successful as they were. And even the um, Gossip Girl creators themselves, I'm pretty sure, did an interview where they said that Chuck and Blair weren't meant to be together. Spoiler for the books. Um, they aren't together in the books, or maybe they have like a brief fling or something, but they aren't like a big thing in the books. So when it came to the TV show, again, they were just kind of going to be a bit of a fling, you know, a season one kind of thing, but then they discovered that chemistry they had and how much the fans love them together, and that is ultimately why they became endgame. I didn't mind Dan being Gossip Girl, it kind of made sense and was a good storyline and in a way adds rewatch value thinking about how Dan was obsessed with Serena the whole time. Whenever Dan reacts shocked to Gossip Girl Blast while being alone, I imagine he's just reacting to the tip coming in or whenever the blasts seem harmful to him, he posts them either to not look obvious or he's playing the long game. Only thing that doesn't make sense is how he managed to keep the site going with college and all the drama. And I think it would have been extremely boring if Gossip Girl had just been some random girl. So I'm more than fine with the series ending that way. For me, Dan being Gossip Girl, I'm kind of neutral about it, weirdly enough. Um, I've seen some terrible show finales in my day. Prill lies, I'm looking at you. So Dan being Gossip Girl to me, I'm not like super, oh, that was the worst TV ending I've ever seen. But I also don't love it at the same time. I'm actually working on a video where I go through like all the reasons why it made sense that Dan was Gossip Girl and all the reasons why it didn't make sense that he was Gossip Girl. There's a lot of like plot holes and things with that because he was never supposed to be Gossip Girl from the beginning. They hadn't really chosen who Gossip Girl was gonna be. So I think that's why it's a bit loose. They had some ideas like Eric, um, Nate actually was a big one as well, apparently. So, you know, they had some kind of things going around. And even with the books, again, spoiler for the books, you don't find out who Gossip Girl is. I think it's just heavily implied that it's Jenny, but you don't actually know. I kind of like that idea that you just don't know who Gossip Girl is, but I guess that kind of would have been like an unsatisfying ending maybe, I don't know. I think it being Dan was good in some senses because I cannot stand the random person we've never met before trope. I cannot stand it. It is purely for shock value and kind of diminishes the fan theories and all the kind of build up to it personally. So I was glad that it was someone we knew. I think out of the kind of core group members, you know, your Blairs, Chucks, everything like that, Dan was the one that made the most sense. Had it been, yeah, Blair, Chuck, Serena, anything like that, it just wouldn't 
have made even <laughs> an ounce of sense. So at least with Dan, he has a clear motive for it. Like when he explains why he did it, it does make sense, I feel, the reason why it all like started and everything. And it does kind of tie up a few loose ends, like the fact that Jenny knew about it. I think it could have maybe been done a little bit better or maybe if they hadn't changed who they wanted it to be so late in the game, obviously they could have left more breadcrumbs and maybe not so many plot holes um, about it being Dan. But yeah, I mean, there were some moments, I'm not gonna give away my whole damn, does it make sense that Dan was Gossip Girl video, but some of the things that I have in there, you know, when Gossip Girl kind of took a break over the summer, that was when Georgina showed up with Milo. So that kind of coincides. Um, you know, the two times that Gossip Girl stopped posting kind of out of respect were when Blair had a car crash. And at that point, Dan was in love with Blair. So that made complete sense. And secondly, when Serena had her overdose, um, well, the whole Juliet thing, um, I think Gossip Girl stopped posting then as well. And again, he was in love with Serena. So wait for that video to hear the whole thing, but I don't mind it personally. I think it was, I think it was fine. Okay, Jenny had ambition and balls. Her storyline didn't always focus around boys and romance. She was ahead of her time, really. And then someone replied saying she had a few romance storylines. Actually, they just never worked out for her. I have a whole video as part of Gossip Girl Week. I feel like every, every talk about talking about, I'm gonna be like, so I have a video on this. Um, about why I feel like Gossip Girl failed Jenny Humphreys. You can go and watch that. But I completely agree. I think Jenny is one of the best characters on the show, personally. I absolutely love her. And I did really like that she had drive and she had ambition, whether it was rightly or wrongly. She had a fashion thing that she was really into and I found that super cool to watch, you know, as a teenager. When I first started watching Gossip Girl, I was 14. Um, which is how she is in the first episode. In the first season, she's, you know, 14 into 15. So as I was watching it for the first time, I was her age. And I thought that was so cool that she was wanting to be a fashion designer. She designed her own clothes. She made her own clothes. Even when, maybe wrongly so, her drive was to be the Queen Bee, she did it. And she, oh my God, a cotillion. That was Jenny's episode. She ate those girls up in that episode. So I personally like Jenny and I do agree that it was fun that she was focused on different things it wasn't always relationship drama yes she had her kind of thing she had her fling with Nate and the Damien thing as well but they were really interesting storylines it wasn't solely focused on the relationship it was more she was doing her fashion thing and her rebellious stage and Nate just happened to be a part of that and then with Damien it was a whole rebellious thing and there was also the whole like drugs thing mixed into that so again it was more interesting than just she's in love with this guy and whatever. Rufus always acted as if he was the most self-righteous person when he wasn't. In the Ivy matter he should have supported Lily and then this one's got a huge this one's got quite a few replies. I liked Rufus as a character overall but yes he had no reason to support Ivy it was the writers gearing up for Bart's return that did that. I think it was also the Darina return that like ruined them and it would have been weird to have them be step siblings and get married. It was just an assassination of character for Rufus. I was so disappointed. It was already weird that they shared a sibling. Um, it's so funny because they threw that plot line and they went, actually, we want Dan and Serena to end up together. So let's pretend that this didn't happen and just never mentioned him again. So we would forget about him. I agree to a certain extent. I definitely agree with the fact that Lily and Rufus's relationship was ruined in order to pave, like to make way for Dan and Serena to eventually get married, which I think is a shame. I think Lily and Rufus had some of the best chemistry on that show, but we're not even gonna get into it right now. I don't know. Rufus definitely has like an air of like doing the right thing, moral high ground kind of vibes, which I definitely don't agree with when he is so harsh with Jenny about her whole fashion thing. But Honestly, I don't know. Maybe I'm coming in with the unpopular opinions myself here, but in the Ivy storyline, I feel like Lily was in the wrong. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe I just like, I'm not seeing it how other people see it, but I have always thought that they were so harsh to Ivy because yes, obviously she did deceive them, but she was literally being paid by Carol to do that. She didn't set out to like con them or anything. She was hired by Carol to get their money. And even after that, she didn't use their money. I mean, maybe she, oh, she kept a checkbook, but I don't think she actually used it. I can't 
can't remember, was the only one that actually looked after Cece. And Cece knew. This is the difference, I feel like. If Cece didn't know that she was Ivy, then yeah, that's dodgy business. And if she had left everything to Charlotte Rhodes, that would have been fine. But the fact that she leaves it to Ivy Dickens, she knew. She knew. And Ivy looked after her and didn't get to be there when she died. And Lily tried to take absolutely everything away from her. And I thought Lily was in the wrong there. I can't lie. I think they're so harsh on Ivy, all of them. Serena, absolutely everybody. And do I think that Rufus should have just completely abandoned Lily and supported Ivy? No, but also I kind of agree with him for at least trying to do things amicably in the beginning and looking at her side of the story. Nate was a very compliant friend until it affected him. He knew what everyone was up to and went along with a lot of it. The only time he didn't was when he was close to that person. I strongly believe Nate is not as vacant as he leads on. He's been there his whole life and has seen and done so much horrible stuff for that to be the case. I agree with this. I think Nate, he's love him. I absolutely love Nate. And he is like the, the definition of a himbo, bless him. But he runs a bloody newspaper. Like he runs a newspaper and he, at the end of the show, is like, you know, kind of hinting that he's going to run for mayor of New York. Like he's not dumb. He's not. He, he might lack a little common sense sometimes. He's been in this society for his whole life. He knows how it works. And I mentioned this in my Ultimate Gossip Girl video that Nate is very flimsy with his morals. Do the whole ignorance is bliss thing, but then sometimes he will do shady shit and he will slip. So I think, yeah, Nate is definitely widely seen as the nicest character. And I think some of that stems from the fact that he's like never sent in a Gossip Girl blast. But I think, you know, he's got some more shady stuff than people give him credit for. Nate should have been Gossip Girl, it would have been the ultimate betrayal. And then someone replied to that saying, would also track with why he was the only one who never sent in a tip. They all praised that when really it should have been a red flag. This is interesting because I had never thought about Nate being Gossip Girl ever until I saw an article about one of the showrunners that left in season five, I think, saying that Nate was like their top candidate to be Gossip Girl. I do think this is interesting because there are points in the show where Nate doesn't really see blasts so much. Like I can't picture him like reacting to a Gossip Girl blast. I feel like it's more other people, yeah, like Dan, Serena, Blair, that are kind of like are more involved in Gossip Girl because he doesn't really get posted about that much or like really targeted by Gossip Girl. So, I feel like that would kind of make sense. And I guess, you know, Dan's whole thing was that he was able to mimic the language of the Upper East Side girl. But I think Nate could probably easily do that as well, having dated Blair for so long and been in that friendship group. He, to me, just always seemed too chill to do it. I don't know. I think it would have been weird for him because he's just so not fussed about stuff. Whereas Dan would be in drama and would kind of get himself involved and would be passionate about things when he talks about them. Nate doesn't really have that so much. He's just like goes with the flow. He's just chill to the point where I can't see him putting in that kind of effort. I feel like it would have been one of those where it would have been a big betrayal, but also I don't think any of them really would have cared. It's hard because I don't think we really get the full extent of it because it's revealed so late in the episode. Everyone's just kind of like, oh, okay. Whereas like, you've literally tortured them their whole lives and they're just kind of like, oh wow, I never knew it was you, Dan. So I feel like it was kind of rushed, the reveal personally. I would have liked if they'd revealed it right at the beginning of the episode or even the episode before. And then we got to see more kind of fallout of that and reactions. But yeah, I think had it been Nate, I don't know if it would have had that much impact. Like it would have been a big betrayal, but then also they're very easy to forgive people in their own circle. So... I think it would have been more of a, wow, I can't believe it was Nate, rather than like, a, oh my God, I can't believe he did this. Blair deserved to go to Yale and Serena should have gone to Brown and they would have focused more on the college storyline instead of completely abandoning it. Um, I also would have settled for a full arc at Columbia. And someone replied, I agree, I wanted to see Serena get away just once. She would have grown so much. And I don't mean Serena's away, but look at what she's been up to on page six. I want a full storyline, like with her and Stephen, but not based around a man. 
I really like this idea. I think it would have been nice to see her kind of blossom and start a new life without a man. Like when she starts her new life, it's because of Stephen and it surrounds Stephen and all of what he's got going on. So I think that would have been really fun to see her go to college and meet new people and kind of be able to blossom on her own. I guess they just kind of didn't want to split up the group so much. But yeah, even like with Columbia, it just kind of gets forgotten about. They make this big deal about Blair, you know, finally getting into a school where she fits in and then they just kind of forget about it. No one ever graduates. No one ever <laughs> attends any classes after season, like halfway through season four, I think it is. I would have liked to have seen more focus on that, especially just from more of an outsider perspective of um, being in the UK. I think seeing the American college system would have been pretty cool, especially in that more like high society view of it. I feel like they definitely kind of grow up too fast almost. Um, you know, we have the first two seasons in the like high school, which is cool. And then you have, they kind of do college, but not really. And then they're suddenly like adults, like everyone's doing adult stuff. People are running companies, they're buying hotels, they're getting engaged. And I think you kind of forget how old they're supposed to be because when the time the series ends, not including the five year time jump before that, like in season six, they're like 21. Yeah, early 20s. And they all like have already, you know, done all this stuff. Nate's the like running a newspaper. Um, Serena's potentially going to get engaged to this Stephen guy. Blair's, you know, being married, almost had a baby. There is so much that goes on. And I think it would have been nicer to maybe see a time jump earlier on so that for the last season or maybe the last two seasons, we could have seen them more in that adult world and it would have just made a bit more sense. I think they had to make them grow up really quickly because they, you know, wanted these more adult storylines. Gossip Girl sexualized Serena way too much for it to have been Eric. It would have been weird. I agree with that. I think Eric would have been an odd choice. I think Jenny would have been a great choice if Taylor Momsen had wanted to stay. I would have loved if Jenny was Gossip Girl. But I think Eric, yeah, would have just been a bit weird. He's very much on the sidelines. And also, why would he be so invested in, like, his sister's year group? Um, it would have made more sense for him to be Gossip Girl for, like, his year group with, like, Jenny and that. Things just don't really make sense. He's so, like, detached from the other people as well, I feel like, um, that it would have been weird. And as well, um, Connor, who plays him, didn't want a main role. He was quite happy to be recurring and then just not really appear in the last few seasons. So for him to then suddenly come back and be Gossip Girl would have just felt weird. The Dan and Serena ship should have ended as soon as it was revealed that they shared a sibling. It was too weird. Yeah, it was just weird. I feel like for shock value, Rufus shows up to the train station and he's like, tell me one thing, was it a boy or a girl? And you're like, <gasps> No fucking way. For the shock value, it was pretty good. But yeah, they just, it was purely for the shock value. And then they bring him in and they just completely get rid of him again. And it was weird. It was weird. And they just kind of forget about it and they get married and everything just kind of goes back to how it was in season one. And I think, I don't know, I always got the feeling that Dan and Serena were always going to be endgame no matter what kind of happened in the show. So I think it was weird that they did that knowing, probably knowing that they were going to end up together anyway. Dan and Blair was a revolutionary ship. The banter, the romantic tension, the build up, not everyone got it, but I certainly did see the vision. Gosh, I talked at length about how I feel about Dan and Blair in my Blair love interest video. But for me, they just didn't work as a couple. I don't know. I just didn't feel it. I just didn't get it. I loved the banter. Loved it. Even the romantic like tension a little bit. Dan having this crush on her and this kind of unrequired love kind of vibe. I really liked it. I loved their banter. I thought they were absolutely hilarious together. But if they had been Endgame, I don't know how I would have felt about that. I feel like it would have been a little too weird. And I don't like that because they got together, it then ruined their friendship and they were no longer friends after they broke up because I thought their friendship was one of the best things about the show. Jenny isn't terrible. Serena and Blair are equally as terrible. And Louis was a good guy driven bad by Blair's scheming and manipulations. Firstly, I agree that Jenny isn't terrible. I love Jenny. I, I agree that Serena and Blair do equally as if, if not more horrible things than she does. And I agree about Louis as well. I think he was a genuinely nice guy and they had some sweet moments, but 
the things that she put this man through, she chose Chuck over him numerous times. On their wedding day, this video comes out that she loves Chuck. He finds a paternity test. So he knows that she must have slept with Chuck to need to check if he was the father or not. It's mad. The way that she treated him and stuff, like I don't blame him for going full evil in the end. Chuck was the real villain of Gossip Girl. Dan and Blair were the best couple on the show. They for sure had chemistry. You guys were just blinded by Chuck and Blair. And Chuck and Blair was literally one of the worst ships I've ever seen. They had chemistry, but that's all I can say for them. I think Chuck and Blair definitely had their toxic moments. I don't think for a second they are like the perfect couple or like the example of a very healthy relationship. But I think entertainment wise, they are definitely for me, one of the top ships on the show. They pair together really well in the show just because their storylines are so dramatic. They're so emotional and as like a TV viewer, that is for me is the kind of stuff that I want to see. Whereas for Dan and Blair, they didn't have that same impact, I don't think. Serena and Nate fans were robbed of them having a relationship that lasted longer than a blink of an eye. I believe Nate was the best match for Serena after season one Dan. If she didn't end up with Nate, I would have preferred that she at least chose herself for once. I completely agree with that. I think Nate was a really good match for Serena. I really liked them together when it was like good in the very beginning when they were together. The idea that he had kind of always loved her, I thought was really sweet. And that they had kind of come together after... I liked that they didn't get together straight away. You know, it takes until season three for them to finally get together, which I liked. But yeah, it's over as soon as it starts, which I think was a real shame. I'd like to have seen them last at least a season, um, if not more. Vanessa and Jenny don't deserve the amount of hate that they get. With Jenny, I completely agree. With Vanessa, I have a whole, I have a whole video coming about Vanessa, but I also think she, maybe, I think she's overhated. But I think the writers also intended for that to happen. I don't know if this is unpopular, but the Ivy Dickens slash Lola and Juliet storylines get more agitating with each rewatch. And someone said, I always felt this way about Ivy slash Lola and Juliet. I don't understand how anyone likes them. For me, I don't like Ivy. I just kind of sympathize with what happened to her. The real Lola, I do find a bit boring. I don't really care for her story so much either. The Juliet storyline, I think is really good. I can't lie. Um, it is annoying to like watch it and know that all this stuff is happening, but no one believes Serena and all that. But I think that's obviously the point of that storyline. Um, for me, the one that I get bored with is Ben. Like the Juliet bit, I think is the good bit. But once she leaves and it's just Ben left, no. Serena is the biggest villain of them all. Um, I've seen a lot about stuff about this. I love Serena. I do. I love Sancho and Barbie. But I do agree that in the later season, she gets more selfish and more irritating. Blair and Serena are not feminist badass women. They are actual terrible people. <laughs> I see posts every day about how terrible Serena is, but Blair gets apologists. To me, um, Blair's apologists are delusional. Blair was the poster child for internalized misogyny. She never had the same standard for men and women. She was quick to forgive the men, but terrorized women. She was insecure and frankly a terrible person. Serena is the same. Serena was insecure and clearly needs therapy because her relationships are as embarrassing as her mum's. Watching 1% um, do morally questionable things and get away with it because of money is entertaining. They're not good people and the writers didn't intend for them to be um, until they tried to give them shitty redemption arcs. Honestly, yeah. I think that is the draw of this show is to see, to see the drama, to see the relationships, to see like, you know, the bickering and the fights and all that stuff. Like that is the pull of the show. And I completely agree that I don't think they're supposed to be looked at as good people or role models for anybody. And Blair's an icon. She's, for me, she's one of the best TV characters I've ever seen. But I don't think she's a great person. I think she has good moments and I think she does have sweet moments and some good character development. But ultimately, she is introduced in the first episode as an antagonist. She is the queen bee, the head bitch in charge. That's her whole trope. It's fun to like, you know, use their quotes. I always love to see edits of Blair and things like that. But I by no means think that she's like, a model citizen. But I do think that Blair has a lot of internalized misogyny for sure. Especially when it comes to when Jenny and Chuck slept together. She just banished Jenny. She forgives Chuck literally almost right after that or like a little bit after that. Dan 
um, was the one that sent that video. She forgive like to her wedding that ruined her wedding, and she forgives him for that pretty easily. But she's always very harsh with Serena. She's always very harsh with Jenny, Vanessa. So I I see that for sure. And Serena having relationships that are like almost embarrassing as her mum's. Low key, she 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 doesn't know how to pick them. I actually liked Dan being in love with Blair. Something about how he noticed everything about her and admired her determination it got to me. I completely agree. I loved that. Like I said, I loved their friendship. I loved how much he truly saw her as a person. When they actually got together, I feel like it just kind of fizzled out. It just didn't work. Serena's best love interest was Carter and he should have been her end game. Honestly, I really, I really liked Carter. Um, I think he's a really good character and also just a really good match for Serena. I feel like Serena's, <laughs> it's really cold in my apartment by the way. Um, I feel like Serena is, as a lot of people point out, she's a little morally ambiguous. <laughs> like she can be kind of selfish and I don't know, she doesn't treat people the best sometimes. So I feel like someone like, you know, Nate, as much as they did have good chemistry and maybe he made her like into a better person or whatever, um, I liked that Carter had a bit more of an edge and that he was also a bit dodgy. So then they kind of like, I don't know, I think they paired together well. People who obsess over how Chuck is the worst character on the show and how Blair should end up with Dan are forgetting how terrible of a pair how terrible of a person Blair is. She is equally as evil, which is why she forgives him for his horrible deeds and why her and Chuck absolutely deserve one another. Literally, of course, she ends up with Chuck. Neither of them could possibly be with anyone else. Honestly, yeah, a little bit. I mean, Blair's like, she's got her nice moments and I don't think she's like deep down, you know, a good person, sort of. But she does some really horrible things in this show and so does Chuck. So I do feel like because of that, it's not, I don't know. I don't have that view of, oh, you know, Blair deserved so much better than Chuck. Like she was so much better than him. She deserved like, you know, like, cause to be honest with you, they're both like, yeah, pretty awful people sometimes. So I feel like they just work together. Eric should have had more screen time. I agree. I think Eric was a really fun character and I really loved his friendship with Jenny, but obviously, yeah, the actor didn't want that. Um, he, I think he kind of saw how much press the main characters got and how much they got like followed around and like the kind of celebrities they became and he decided he didn't want that. Um, so he was happy to just be a side character. Um, but I think it would have been fun to see him have a bit more serene time. I always liked his relationship with Rufus and Serena and Jenny. So, and he like had like funny little one-liners and stuff like that. So I think it was a shame that he kind of just went away after, like in the later seasons. Oh my God, this is so cute. Um, Grudge Bead, I think is how you say it, um, said, I love your videos and I can't wait to see this one. Um, I can't think of any um, any opinions I have that would be deemed unpopular. Um, Snoo Giraffes 9993 said, OMG, I love your channel. I recently binged your GG Deep Dives. That's so freaking cute. Shout out to, shout out to them. I love Jenny. Um, she was still so young and was making crazy revolutionary fashion designs and didn't give a fuck if someone tried to get in her way. And like, yeah, exactly. Jenny is an icon, okay? People are so harsh. Her ambition and talent was definitely taken for granted, 100%. Ooh, okay, I feel like this is truly an unpopular opinion. I like Serena better than Blair. Yes, she made mistakes, but I feel like most times Serena was trying to do the right thing and Blair was arrogant and mean the whole time. That's about it. I hardly ever see people say that they like Serena more than they like Blair. I think Serena has like, sometimes you see people talk about Serena more for like the icon like that she is in terms of style or fashion or, you know, like rather than her actual character traits. Usually when it comes more down to storyline, people tend to favor Blair. So this is interesting. I feel like I agree. I feel like she does, sometimes she does a lot of awful stuff, but I just love season one Serena so much that I'm willing to excuse some of the shit that she does for the rest of the show. I strongly dislike Serena. She constantly declares that she's taking a break from boys, but then ends up in another relationship. She's always head over heels over another guy. I think that is something that was a little bit annoying. Like I got, that character arc of like, she was in love with love and just wanted to be loved. I totally get that. And I think that's a really cool storyline, story arc, but it never really goes anywhere. Like she doesn't have a moment where she's like, 
I can be on my own and I can, you know, she goes straight from Stephen, who even calls that out and it's like, she's always looking for a life raft to Dan straight after that. So I would have liked if we had some time where Serena was just single and not, you know, just not in a relationship, but still flirting with someone or whatever, fully single, you know, just like focusing on herself. Um, like when she did the um, publicity stuff, I thought that was quite cool to just see her in a different light. And when she did her filming and things like that were interesting, but they just couldn't stick to it. They always had to revert back to boy drama. Almost real Sunday 5063 said, oh my God, I love your videos. I need seasons five and six of your Gossip Girl breakdown. They are coming. They are just taking so long to edit. And also I haven't even finished filming some of them because where I film it, um, I don't live there anymore. <laughs> um, so like I have to go back there to film it and it's just a whole thing. It's just taking so long, but it is on its way at some point. Colin was one of best, Colin was one of best, oh my God, what is wrong with me? Colin was one of Serena's best romantic partners. And it was a shame we didn't get to see a relationship between them, yet they dragged out her relationship with Ben. Oh my God, yes. Okay, Colin, he was really nice. Like, obviously he was weirdly wrapped up in that whole Juliet thing, so like stuff. And then he was also a teacher, which was a little bit weird. But if you like separate that, he was actually a pretty good match for her. But then obviously things ended because she decided she wanted to be with Dan. Anyway, but... Why did they drag out the whole Ben thing? Ben was honestly one of the worst love interests that she had and he's in it for so long. The only character that didn't regress in character development throughout the series was Chuck. It honestly felt like the other characters were going backwards each season instead of learning and becoming better. 100%. I honestly agree with this. I think it's, it is frustrating because they're almost stuck in like a loop where Blair, she starts off the series, right? She hates Dan, basically. She judges him, she's snarky with him, you know, thinks that he's not good enough for Serena, all this stuff. And then you go through the series and she being friends with Dan and even falling in love with, well, falling in love, dating Dan. And, but come season six, we're back where we started, where she thinks Dan's not good enough and she doesn't like him and she takes jabs at him. Obviously Dan and Serena are together in the beginning and them ending up together is fine. But again, we seem to have Serena in a similar place to where she started and everyone just kind of feels like that a little bit but yeah Chuck Chuck actually feels co like a completely different character to the character we meet in season one whereas I feel like you don't really get that so much with the others Blair treats Dorota like shit and it's embarrassing re-watching nowadays to see how disrespectful she is to her and how much Blair treats her like trash even though Dorota essentially raised her I think that's true but also I guess that kind of plays into the whole like, you know, rich brats, you know, privilege, like that kind of thing. Um, so I feel like that probably is quite accurate to how people would treat their staff, which is so ridiculous. So yeah, but I do think it's a shame because when you get to see those really sweet moments, I think that kind of changes maybe more towards the end of the show. You have Dorota's wedding and Dorota has her baby and things like that. I think you get to see sweeter moments from them, which is really nice. Um, Nate and Jenny. Yes! yes, I literally agree with all of their points that they're making right now. Nate and Jenny should have been given a proper chance. Out of all of his love interests, he has the most chemistry with her and it felt like a missed opportunity. 100%. I am such a Jenny and Nate shipper. I can't even lie. I thought they were so cute. And I loved their story. I loved the build up. I loved all of it. And then it just got wasted. And I feel like they were just, I always liked their scenes together. I thought they had such a genuine, sweet dynamic that wasn't, it felt so detached from the kind of relationships that the other relationships that Nate had. I don't know. I never got invested in them in that same way. They should have stuck closer to the books and drawn more inspiration from the books in the later seasons like they did with seasons one and two. There were so many amazing storylines they could have pulled inspo from rather than writing the most insane and unrealistic plots that we got. I, I, I agree. I think it makes, it kind of makes me a bit sad when... When I like was getting into these shows, I would obviously watch them first. Um, and then, you know, you find out, oh my God, there's books associated with like, these are based on books and then you read the books and everything. Um, and I think it's kind of fun. If you haven't read the Gossip Girl books, you should read them. Or equally, if you haven't read the Pretty Little Lies books, you should read them because 
I had seen Pretty Little Lies. I watched it all the way through. I was obsessed with Pretty Little Lies. I was watching it every week. And then when it was over and I got to start on the books, it was kind of fun because the books, it's kind of like bittersweet because on one hand, the books are really good and I really am loving the Pretty Little Liars books. Because the storylines are very different, I almost feel like I'm getting new episodes of PLL in a weird way, like because it's all the same characters, I get to reimagine it like in a different way. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Okay, this didn't happen or this did happen or, you know, that kind of stuff is fun. And I do the same thing with the Gossip Girl books. But on the flip side of that, you then also get these really good storylines and you're like, oh my God, why didn't they use this in the show? This would have been so good. Rufus set Jenny up for failure, forced her to go to school full of more wealthy kids where she was bullied relentlessly. Instead of putting her in a more fitting school, he just punished her. I 100% agree. Um, I talked about this in my like Jenny video, but Rufus shamed her for wanting, you know, being so desperate to fit in and doing all these desperate tactics to try and fit in with the rich kids and like was like you know I'm not gonna apologize for not having this money for you but at the same time the school that you've put her in she is surrounded by those people all day every day she's supposed to make friends with them and they bully her constantly and he then forces her to go back there he won't let her pursue her fashions when Jenny was thriving was when she was at Eleanor's obviously before you know their relationship went under she was thriving there when she was doing her fashions that's when she was like not involved in the scheming and she wasn't caught up in all this stuff and all these people weren't being so horrible to her yeah I just never agreed with Rufus in that situation Serena is one of the most boring characters I've ever seen on a show and people just like Blake Lively I love Blake Lively I love that woman so I do love Serena because of that and the way that she played her um but I think the reason I like Serena is more yeah because of how she was in the early seasons and then, yeah, she kind of, like, falters in the later seasons, but I still, like, hold on to, like, the cute bubbly Serena that we got initially. Mine is that what happened in the last Tango Then Paris was both Chuck and Jenny's fault. Chuck asked her if she wanted to stay, and consent was clearly given. Not only the age of consent being what it is in New York, but also she knew exactly what she was doing. That whole storyline leading up to the finale had her hurting everyone around her for whatever reason she saw fit. Rufus and Lily, Serena and Nay, and then Chuck and Blair. A lot of people wonder why Blair went easier on Chuck than she did on Jenny. Honestly, she didn't owe Jenny anything. They weren't friends. She had no reason to go easy on her whatsoever. And for those of you who bring up Chuck's actions with Jenny in the pilot, clearly amends were made since then and what happened between them in season three had absolutely no relation. Eric taking her side just by her crying her eyes out for yet and for making yet another dumb mistake was kind of stupid. Dan was her older brother, so I get why he was upset but he also only had one side, knew Jenny was out of control, hurting everybody, and honestly shouldn't have gone so far as to punch Chuck in the face. Let's also remember Chuck did what he did because he was hurting. Jenny did all the things she did in that storyline solely to be vindictive. For me, I agree that I think it's both Jenny and Chuck's fault. I don't think anyone's solely to blame for what happened because I just think, but also I don't really place a lot of blame. I think Chuck, um, obviously saw that she was in like an emotionally vulnerable place. So I don't think he was right to sleep with her because I think it was kind of obvious that she wasn't really in the right headspace for it. I also don't think he knew at that point that it was her first time. They were both just really sad. Like both of them thought, you know, Chuck thought he'd lost the love of his life forever. And Jenny was like, nobody loves me. So I think in that moment, they both just wanted to not feel like that. So I don't really have like a, oh, it was this person's fault or this person's fault. And I don't really think either of them did it maliciously, personally. And someone replied to that saying, while I don't find what Chuck did in the pilot acceptable, there's a combination of the pilot doesn't really count. Jenny suffered from not being part of their world and they didn't forgive her and they shunned her. And I think that was so harsh because she was, she was still younger than them. Like she was the age of consent in New York and um, so legally there's no issue here, but she was younger than them and I think she was so impressionable and Blair had literally just told her that nobody loved her, that she had absolutely nobody in her life that cared about her. And I don't, I feel like Jenny's always framed as the villain when in reality, awful things happen to her all the time and she's just a teenager. 
And she does things in the show that sometimes are nowhere near as awful as what some of the other characters do to each other. I think I think people can be too harsh on Jenny a lot of the time. Chuck and Serena should have went out. Oh my God, can you imagine? That would have been so weird. That even feels weird to say. Um, Blair regresses season's worth of growth into high school Blair um, when we get to season six in order to make the chair relationship work again. See, I don't really know why they did that though, because personally it's like he'd had his character development and like I don't see why Blair had to go back to high school Blair in order for them to work as a couple because Chuck had already had his character growth and I think Blair then coming back to that knowing that he was ultimately the love of her life but with the character growth that she had gotten I feel like that would have been fine I don't really know why it had to go away in order for them to work. Um, I'm rewatching the show right now. The writers clearly didn't know what to do with Ivy's character. They made her lovable. I caught myself cheering for her to be with Nate. In my opinion, the whole plot of her not actually being her cousin was pointless. They didn't need the drama. They could have used the season she's in to build up the relationship and give Nate a decent ending. That would have been interesting. I feel like if she'd just been her cousin and just been a nice character and been with Nate, that could have been interesting. Or, yeah, I don't know. They just make her into this weird villain, but I don't feel like she's a villain. So, I don't know. I find her scenes, like, weird because I feel like I'm not supposed to root for her, but also I feel bad for her at the same time. Someone has said that Serena wasn't the villain people make her out to be, whereas Blair was actually evil. And then there's a whole, like, thread underneath it of people being, like, saying all the like awful stuff that Serena has done. Yeah, so this is the last one. Jenny is a horrible person. I don't know why everyone was so mad at Rufus for trying to corral her. I know he went over the line at moments, but she was old enough to realize a lot of her actions were not okay. Running away, hanging out with drug dealers and stuff like that is not okay. She needs to be held accountable. I think that's true. That obviously she shouldn't have been drug dealing. Um, but also I think Rufus was trying to force her into that world and she tried on numerous occasions to not be in it. She tried to be in the fashion world and do what she wanted to do and Rufus pushed her back in to Constance and then got annoyed at her when she got swept up in all that constant drama again. And then she had another cry for help, like with the whole William thing and, and the whole Damien thing. And she was clearly struggling with something. No one's just going to just start like you know, going into this downward spiral for no reason. But Rufus, again, just scolds her, is like, you know, doesn't even try to talk to her about stuff. And then, you know, she literally says, I just wanted my family back. She says in that episode with William where he like gets exposed, she says, I just wanted us to be a family again, the three of us, how it was before. And he's basically just like, well, get with it. We're Upper East Side people now. <laughs> he never once tries to see things from her side I feel like and I think that's just a, one of the downfalls of Jenny's character is that no one aside from Eric um and even he abandons her in the end like ever really tries to talk to her and see why she does the things that she does because from an outside perspective I feel like it's pretty clear but everyone in the show just jumps straight to like attacking her and she's always framed as the one in the wrong even though a lot of the times I don't Feel like she is okay so that is it for today's video that was like almost a hundred i think <laughs> um unpopular opinions super excited to see what you guys think which ones do you agree with which ones don't you agree with if you have one that i haven't talked about today please leave it in the comments um i love reading the comments and replying to them my patreon my second channel everything that i kind of have going on instagrams podcasts everything like that will be linked in the description if you want to check it out. That would be absolutely amazing. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.